Alright everyone, welcome back to another Kingdom Hearts 3 Story Explained video. Guys, today I will be explaining the story of Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh boy, what am I getting myself into? Guys, this is going to be a fun one. It's going to be a hard one. So, in this video I will not be able to answer all your questions, of course. But, if you had a question, feel free to ask in the comments below. And I will do my best to answer them for you. This video will contain spoilers. Please be aware of that. Again, guys, I will try my best. I pointed out some things I wanted to talk about. Um, as this is a story explained video, meaning I will talk about the actual story, the main character, and the ending. I will do this as quickly and efficiently as possible because I know people do not have like 30 minutes to watch a video. So I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible, guys. Again, please feel free to ask questions below, and I might do other videos of this if this one, if you guys wanted to. But starting off, guys, Kingdom Hearts 3, this is awesome. The arcing, the overall story of this whole game, a guy named Zehenort, he is a villain, the bad guy of bad guys. He is the strategic player. He is he this guy is he plans everything out he plans every move from the start to the end and he hardly loses he never loses that's the thing that's what he's known for he plans out every scenario and then has backups to the backups that is Zehenort. what he wants to do is take 13 people of dark and battle them against seven people of light in an epic keyblade war doing so will forge a weapon called the keyblade the x blade this is the very first keyblade in existence and the wielder of this weapon can control something called kingdom hearts now kingdom hearts is what i like to call the god tool the controller of this can create existence wipe out existence like get, get rid of everyone Forge all the planets into one giant planet or do really whatever you want. Zehanor wants to control this in order to recreate everything in his own image and lead the new people as the king. So there's no darkness in a way that he... he it's weird. He wants there to be no darkness. He wants there to... Well, he wants things to be good. That's his plan. He wants it to be good, but because he's very strategic, he is using the darkness to help him. But he wants everything to be good, but he's doing it in a bad way. It is a very confusing... It's not confusing, it's just very hard to read the character of Xehanort because he wants to do good, but then he does so many bad things back to back to back. So if you want, guys, I'll make another video on that where I can talk more in depth about the character of Zehenort. But, moving on. As the controller, the wielder of the Keyblade, he can do what he wants. That is the overall plot, the story of the game. The, oh, actually, actually, that's, that's like the actual plot. Moving on. I'm going to do this in order, guys, so just so you know. That was the plot. Now let's talk about some key characters of this whole game. First one being Sora. Now, Sora, we all know Sora. He is he is the main character, really. In this game, you might have seen that he's different. He's as he's weaker than he's normally. He he's slower. People pick on him a lot. And that is because in the last game called Dream Drop Distance, he failed. He failed at every single task given to him. And even worse than that, he had to be saved by someone else. In the process of all this stuff going on, he lost all of his powers, he got immature, and he really just messed up. That's why his character is like it is in this game. And what, what's cool about it, when I, what I love, and Tetsuya did a great job on this, which is the creator of Kingdom Hearts, he took Sora as this weak person that lost everything, just failed, 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 and had an arc, a character arc, where he matured throughout each world. And through the game, especially near the ending, he matured so much and morphed 
character uh, the Sora as a character much more developed he, he got way more developed than I really thought he was going to and you could see how his attitude changed and his powers grew and what he was able to do grew and it was really something awesome with Sora as a character and that's why if you look at the that's why the character was weak and throughout the story it really was a journey of maturity for Sora to become you know I guess stronger to become better to become more of a person which is awesome it really was a cool cool thing um the next main character I want to talk about, <clears throat> which is kind of a hidden character in a way, and it was pretty cool, but a guy named Zigbar. Oh boy, guys. So we're moving a little bit further ahead, but Zigbar, you noticed, and you might have thought, why is this character in so many scenes? What is going on? I, this guy was just a random organization member who uses guns. Why is he so relevant in this game well Zigbar is someone from hundreds of years ago in the previous like way before anyone he was a Keyblade Guardian and he was assigned a role by the Keyblade Master the Master of Masters to basically watch everything as it unfolds I think his name or I know his name is Lushu I believe it's, it's L-U-X-U I believe and that is his original name and what he his plan was and what he did throughout this whole game and this whole series is he watched everyone he watched what was going on he played roles and he did things secretly which is just an awesome, awesome character. And he's much more developed than you ever would imagine. <clears throat> and to be honest, Zigbar, he's going to be probably one of the new villains. Which is still mind-blowing in a way. That this character that people might just say, man, who is this guy? He is now one of the most secretive, important players. Or not players, people <laughs> in Kingdom Hearts. That still was like, whoa, this guy just popped out of nowhere. But he is one of the original Guardians. But he was assigned a task by the Master of Masters to do a little sneak in and watch in what unfolds. And so that, that, that character, we don't really know too much about it. About him. But as the game progresses, as we find out, he is much more powerful than he leads on to be. And he even loses on purpose, which is crazy. If you think about it, he didn't lose in that battle against him and Sura. He lost so he could hide till the actual end of the battle, which is crazy if you think about it. That's so cool. Um, but that's Zigbar, a very powerful character that, um, that just <laughs> is pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. Um, moving on. Let's talk about, very quickly, Organization 13. The That organization, if, you, if you're looking at it, you're like, man, what's going on with these guys? Why are they why are they doing this? Why are their eyes gold? Why did they change when they got defeated near the end of the game? First off, each one of these organization members are called nobodies. Nobodies is someone that is just a vessel, just a body and a mind. There is no heart. There is no emotions. What Zehanort wants to do with these people, or these nobodies, whatever you want to call them, is put his heart into each one of these vessels to basically control them, to take all of their power, to make like an army of him. Because he knows if he's in each one of them, they really won't lose. And not, no mistakes should happen because he has control over each one of them and to force them to you know do this giant battle <clears throat> that's where their eyes are gold because uh xehanort started the process of actually putting his heart into each one of them it wasn't fully completed but <clears throat> it was getting there which is kind of crazy cool but really crazy at the same time and the other point why did they start changing at near 
near the end of their defeat, like their life. In Kingdom Hearts, when a nobody is defeated or the heartless of that person is defeated, and if both of them is defeated at the same, like, you know, if they're both of them is defeated, the original person gets reforged, recompleted. So when Sora defeated each one of the members, <clears throat> based, they got their heart back in a way. They started to get recompleted. That's why their emotional side started to come out. And they started to talk more like people because they were people at that point. They were actually becoming themselves again which is awesome very very cool um ending to that whole that whole thing it wasn't just all sad it was actually very 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 well done and um that's the organism 13 guys people that are really just being taken over by xehanort because he wants them to fight it out and to have all their power what they're trying to do is just find themselves again and Sora did that by defeating them. So they got recompleted, which is just an awesome, awesome story. Moving on. The ending. So the actual end of this story can can be great. It really is just an amazing ending. And there's a lot of stuff that happened. <clears throat> you might ask, wait, so when Sora got defeated by the giant tornado of Heartless, you might say, well, what's going on there? Technically, what happened there, everyone did die. <laughs> everyone died. But Sora, because he was so strong with everyone's connections, because the whole game, the whole series is about connection and linking people together to make yourself stronger. Sora then went to a place called the Final World. And this place is what I like to call the In-Between to Heaven. That is the best way to describe that place. And that place is just where it kind of explains it in the game. Someone who's very strong, who doesn't want to go yet, who, who can't go, gets stuck. And that's where Sora went. So he had to find himself and escape that place, which you saw in the game. I won't go into depth with that. <clears throat> and as he escaped, you might say, well, where did, why, why did he go to each planet? Why did he go there? He did that to save everyone, and if you really look at it, when he saved everyone, um, saved their hearts, got their bodies back, it kind of went back in time. So I don't know if this is for sure, but I believe Sora used time travel once he saved everyone. I actually think he did Zehenort's ability of going back in time and actually going back in time, which is crazy to think about, um, to the point of where they got defeated so they could be saved because they were prepared in a way, which is, um, that's just an idea I had. Cause if you look at it, that's what happened. He went back in time once he saved everyone. So that was, um, that was a pretty cool thing there. But as everyone got defeated, the organization members, you notice that Kyrie got killed um she did get killed she she her body got destroyed by Zehanort. in that battle sequence when he had each one of the keyblades which is act which acts as a key that um you need so many of them to forge key, the keyblade the x blade that's why there were so many keys floating around Zehanort at the end because each person that got defeated forged a new key um, that's what was going on there. But Kyrie, she got defeated. She got killed, which really set off a chain of emotions and a chain of just in-depth story. And near the end of that whole sequence of the battling and the, the fight that took place near the end, <clears throat> that's when stuff really starts just to be laid on because... They go into different zones. They go to different worlds. They go to a world called... Oh my goodness. Um, Stairway to Heaven. Is that right? I think that's what it's called. Or... Yeah, Stairway to Heaven. It has a different name in Latin, but that's what it means. That world at the very end. Where it has the cool looking buildings and... 
inter like and fans everywhere. It's pretty cool. That's called Stairway to Heaven. That's the whole world. Well, when they battle it out there, you might have seen why does Xehanort have all this body armor? Why does he have himself in different bodies? Well, remember when I talked about how he was putting his heart into each person? That is basically what happened. He gained that vessel for a short while that turned it into a key. So when he went there, he had the power of a vessel and he put himself into that, which means that was his armor and his body times 13. That's why you fought those um, 13 armored Xehanorts at the beginning of that world because he had 13 vessels that formed into keys, which is... It's a little confusing, but just go with it. <laughs> That's what happened. And the final one, which was like the, the big horned armored guy, that was his true armored form. That was his all of his power, all in one, and it was just an epic battle. That was just a very cool battle. Um, moving forward to the very end, you notice that when Sword defeated Xehanort, he didn't want to give up. But then this guy, this random guy called Ericus, popped out of nowhere, Master Ericus. He planned even further ahead. So he, before he got defeated, he put his heart into Terra. Boom. Dude, my, everyone's mind got blown when that happened. But he planned even further ahead than Xehanort to the point of where he put his heart into one of his students and just hid himself there to the very very end and because he was there Xehanort knew he got defeated basically and he you know he gave up that was just a cool cool ending very cool story yeah, at the end right there but <clears throat> that's what happened there Xehanort just planned ahead he got even better that is just such a cool thing um with Xehanort and Master Ericus, you know, basically really old and just gone in a way, they're, you know, at the end of their time. They, um, they went out, they went away, you know, they, they died. <laughs> That's the best way to talk about it, but moving on even more to the final, final bit of this whole Story Explained video. Because most of it, guys, it's kind of hard, again, to explain some of this stuff in a way that is talking about it you know like explaining what is going on the video is going on pretty long right now but if you have any questions guys please ask below and i will try to answer them and hopefully i'm doing good now it took a while to make this video just to figure out really what to talk about but one more thing so you notice sora went off to save kairi because she was dead she was gone so he wanted to go save her and bring her back well you notice that after that he just went away and we don't really see him again ever till like the very very last scene in the whole game what happened there was when he went off he basically went into a different realm to find her and to save her in the process after that you notice everyone got their hearts back all the nobodies they started to become friends it was just a very happy happy scene um Naminé, the girl who who can just draw stuff and change memories. She got a nobody. She got a vessel to be uh, to be in, which is pretty cool. Just a very cool little sequence at the end there. But near the very end, you notice there's a quick scene of Kyrie and Sora sitting on the beach, on the on tree, on the beach at the very end. That means Sora saved Kyrie. But he did not return. He did not get saved. So this must mean that he is gone gone. Or they have to save him. Or something happened that we don't really know about. But that is what it's alluding to. Sora went, saved Kairi. Most likely he lost his body. I'm just guessing, guys. Right now, I'm just guessing, just assuming. And he put his heart inside of Kairi. I think that's what happened, because she looked like he was there. 
but he wasn't. So that could mean that he is inside of Kyrie's heart um, and just lost into whatever place he went to to get Kyrie. So in reality, he's gone right now. Sora did sacrifice himself. It's just a crazy, powerful, mature thing he did that Tetsuya um, really went for. And it was just a great, great, great arcing story for the whole character. But guys, I believe that's going to be it right there. This video has been going on for a while. I hope you all enjoyed it. I really do. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope I talked about everything and um, did my best with this one. If you have any questions, ask below in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. If you want more, just say, hey, make a video about this. I might do it. I might make a video about another story stuff and whatnot. But guys, as always, don't forget to drop a like down below if it was good. Subscribe if it was really good. Um, I have a Discord channel. If you want to join it, come hang out, play some games, who knows. And as always, this has been 2x2, and I'll see you next time.